So better teaching is done through group activities, which is why over break, I redesigned the species interaction lecture to turn it into a group activity and things happened. So we have this lecture. This is only going to be like a part lecture. I actually have assigned a worksheet for the species interaction. It's easy. It's watch Netflix and you're going to enjoy some David Attenborough. You might want to come back and hit that later because I've got another lecture that says David Attenborough does it better. But you're going to just fill out that worksheet. Should be an easy peasy lemon squeezy 10 out of 10 to just talk about five different, uh, four different interactions. You would have been talking about them as a group. You know what? Have a, have a Netflix party. Please do something fun for yourself. Have a Netflix party and watch David Attenborough together and just talk to each other. That'd be the best way to do this species interaction thing. Uh, be social with someone else. Distance if necessary. I don't know what the situation is going to be when you see this, but pretty grim right now. Anyway, I remade this lecture and reposted it, so you'll probably never know the difference. But it's going to be a short one. Anyway, I also want to show you I'm typing all these lectures uh, the night that Jay and right night before Jay Inslee shuts it down. Uh, I'm wearing this. I'm wearing a Marachan instant lunch. This is a mistake to wear to the grocery store. Uh, some some people tried to hoard me. Apparently ramen is, is really popular because it's all people can cook. All right, <clears throat> species interactions. Define predation or bivory mutualism. Do that on your worksheet, guys. Do it on your worksheet. Do it on your own some lonesome. We've already done it a bit um, this semester, so I'm not too worried about this. But here are the terms I want you to get. Cryptic coloration, aposematic coloration, and Batesian mimicry. I want you to give examples of all of these. Watch some David Attenborough, guys. Watch Blue Planet, Planet Earth. Heck, watch Our Planet, Wild China, Wild Romania, um, some, something like that. Your species interactions, you probably remember this. Just, I'm going to refresh you. Looking familiar yet? I made this too small. Mutualism, predation, herbivory, competition, commensalism. This is amensalism, but we don't use it. That's it. That's that's where you want to, uh, to do part one. Go on planet Earth, have some fun, guys. But let's try part two, coloration. This is coloration regarding predation, predators. So it's a response to predation. That, you see that in your living room, and you know that stay-at-home order is now flipped. Hey, Scrum just pulled an Uno on you, reverse. Instead of stay at home, stay out of the home. So that's a behavior right there. The skunk is putting its tail erect, the skunk is doing a threat display, and then the skunk is actually going to stand on its forelegs, wiggle its butt back and forth, and spray its enemies. A skunk can do that three times a day. After that, the skunk's defenseless. Not exactly camouflage. So defenses can be costly. What if the skunk does this and a coyote attacks it and nips it on the, on the forelimb? Now the coyote gets stinked, but the arm of the skunk gets infected and kills it. Confrontation can still be lethal. Confrontation is risky. Defenses are costly. Uh, so you might think, does anything eat a skunk? Yes, a great horned owl will eat a skunk. Great horned owls don't have a sense of smell, so they don't know better. But defenses can be costly, so sometimes it's better to just give a signal to the predator, which will allow us prey species to avoid confrontation. And perhaps sometimes it's best to give a so that's why I dance. I've actually chased a skunk. They don't want to spray you. They want to get away. That's their goal. They do want to avoid confrontation. So predation selects for prey that can defend itself, but better yet, prey that doesn't need to. Perhaps the best doesn't need to is prey that is cryptically colored. That's cryptosis. You can just call it cryptosis. Tales of the cryptosis. Can you see the lichens on the street? Yeah, they're pretty easy to see, but can you see the lizard? If you didn't know there was a lizard there, would you have found the lizard? 
How many things have you walked by? Is a cheap defense of hiding. It's kind of a fun fact. You've walked by the deer on campus plenty of times. It's crypsis just because they don't move much. They're probably edible. This life, this gecko is probably perfectly edible. It's just that by being cryptically colored, it doesn't need to invest in other defenses. That's what makes it so edible. Uh, there's actually a good example of these little grasshoppers. They look like stones until you get close enough and they fly up, which startles a predator if they weren't looking for the grasshopper. Heck, even if they were, but they were looking at the wrong stone at the wrong time, the startle response, bright flashy wings, can act as a benefit to crypsis as well, of startle as well as hiding. Or just hiding and don't get found. This hide and seek champion right here. That's a cheap defensive hide. There's also aposematic coloration. Aposematic coloration are these bold warnings. Oh, there's actually one. Oh, sorry. All of the notes. Speak to the code. Warnings. First, aposematic. Brightly colored organisms are generally brightly colored to warn a predator. A cryptic organism, if found, will be eaten. That newt is giving a threat display showing its brightly colored underside. Those newts are toxic. So poisonous is what I would say. It's when the prey damages the attacker. Venomous is when the attacker damages the prey. <coughs> So, for points here, bragging rights, I guess, all I can really offer. This relies on a certain type of conditioning, though, doesn't it? So, is this classical conditioning or operant conditioning that allows a predator to learn that a, uh, a, a warning is reliable? And a, a warning is a cue associated with a punishment. Operant conditioning relies on operant conditioning to get this message through. Some organism is going to bite that newt and realize the newt tastes terrible, which means one confrontation could kill or damage one newt. But afterwards, all newts of that species are free from that one predator and any predators that have observational learning and saw, hey, 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 look, look, Bill, Bill licked the toad. Bill's high. <laughs> Don't lick that toad, <laughs> Bill. Anyway, they're gonna learn. Then there's Petesian mimicry. In the Bodhi lab, there is a box of bees. In that box of bees, there is one fly. It's got a little speech bubble that says, Day 53, they still haven't realized I'm a fly. That's Petesian mimicry. If you can recognize that hoverflies are one of these yellow stripey things, but they're the yellow stripey thing that doesn't have a stingy thing, you can recognize that they're actually harmless. It relies on operant conditioning that the first interaction between an organism and a yellow stripy thing is between it with a honeybee, a yellow jacket, a paper wasp, a cicada killer, a dirt dauber, or a bumblebee, and there's a sting involved. And after that, they are going to avoid carpenter bees and hoverflies, especially carpenter bees that fly aggressively at organisms. If you get buzzed by a yellow jacket, you will run from a carpenter bee. This is operant conditioning, trial and error associating pain with yellow flying thing. Now, yellow stripy things, as far as I'm concerned, I'll just kill yellow jackets. I, I just hate them. The cicada killers, they, they don't actually uh, sting you. They, they usually won't. The males don't even have stingers. The males are more aggressive buzzers. But once you learn that the ones that are dive bombing you don't even have stingers, you don't even care, man. But what if the mimics outnumber the models? Well, then operating conditioning works the other way. An organism sees a yellow stripy thing, eats it, it's a carpenter bee. No, no sting. Eats another one, it's a hoverfly. No sting. It'll attack the yellow jacket. So, operant conditioning means the mimics have to be less than the models to really make this work. That's it. Just different terms. Covering on the hind end there. Under 10 minutes. What's that? Less than a quibby? Have a great day, guys.